Paul Pactor, CEO of Long Island Cares, the Harry Chapin Food Bank. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bread, our program on YouTube in which we provide information to you, our viewers, our subscribers, about things going on at Long Island Cares at the Regional Food Bank that we think it's important for you to know. My guest today is someone who I have an enormous amount of respect and admiration for, uh, and that is Mary Lou Basile. Mm -hmm. Mary Lou is our Supporting Our Seniors Mobile Outreach Coordinator. Supporting Our Seniors is a program that Long Island Cares established in January of 2020 uh, in order to deliver to our seniors who are homebound or have no access to go to their local food pantry some emergency food packages. And to date, since January, more than 2,200 seniors are receiving emergency food assistance from Long Island Cares, and a lot of it at the responsibility of Mary Lou. Mary Lou, welcome to Breaking Bread. It's so good to see you. It's very nice to be here. Thank you, Paul. I guess I would start uh, asking you, how are you feeling? Because you've been out for a while. I know you had shoulder surgery. I did. It looks as if nothing ever happened. I'm doing really well. I'm glad to be back. Great. And, yeah. Excellent. So, SOS. Good title, Supporting Our Seniors. Supporting Our Seniors, yeah. Comes from, uh, as our viewers uh, may not know, mm -hmm. if we go back to November of 2019, mm -hmm. it came to our attention that the Commodity Supplemental Food Program, CSFP, uh, for Long Island, that was previously operated by Catholic Charities, yes. uh, Catholic Charities was no longer going to be providing the program and Long Island Cares convened a uh, task force of agency leaders, uh, agencies that serve our seniors, as well as members of our state uh, elected official legislative delegation. And together uh, we spoke about the needs of our seniors and our concern that without the CSFP program, many of them would go without emergency food. And uh, the New York State Department of Health stepped in, they heard what we had to say, and they provided us with uh, an emergency funding contract for three months. Yes. That would take us from January through March of 2020 in order to continue providing emergency food to seniors. At the time, it was identified that there are about 38 different locations in Nassau and Suffolk County where the seniors were living. Uh, and were previously assisted by Catholic Charities and now Long Island Cares was going to be picking up the uh, program temporarily yes. on an emergency basis to provide food. So in the beginning, uh, not with COVID-19 because we didn't get involved with COVID until March. Correct. Uh, what were you seeing out in the community in terms of seniors, the need for emergency food assistance, and the support? Uh, what did you see and what were the seniors sharing with you? Um, one story in particular, uh, East Patchogue, uh, there, it was, um, they were losing their supermarkets. Mm. So there wasn't a supermarket within three or four miles from the housing that uh, we currently service. And the seniors were very worried uh, because uh, transportation on Long Island is so difficult. Sure. And they were no longer able to walk to a supermarket, which literally they had one um, two blocks away. Mm. Um, it has since opened up as a new supermarket, mm. but still the seniors were worried um, also of the numbers being serviced. They were told that there were too few seniors in need in this particular housing mm -hmm. uh, to be serviced. And I know Long Island Cares, if there's one person that needs, we're going to be there for that one person. Mm -hmm. And it, the first day I showed up, the, we were, um, the community center was bursting with seniors wanting to be part of our SOS program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we filled out all the paperwork and each time, every month since that I've been going, the numbers have increased. 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 Even though they have a new supermarket across the way, mm -hmm. um, we've brought all kinds of uh, emergency uh, packages, even fresh fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. and they're so very grateful. I mean, it's difficult for seniors uh, on Long Island, first of all, if they don't have a car. 
Yes. And those that may have a car uh, might have decided, have chosen not to drive anymore for many reasons. And it would be unrealistic, at least in my opinion, to ask a senior to take a shopping cart, walk two blocks to the local supermarket, fill it up however they need to fill it up, and then walk back to their apartments uh, when they're limited in their abilities. Yes. Uh, so providing emergency food to seniors, uh, how do we go about that? I mean, how do they know what food we have available? Do they have a say in what they'd like packed in their box? And well, answer that question, then I'll follow it up. So um, I, I work with the coordinators of each senior center and housing. And uh, basically what we put in our back package is uh, two packages of cereal, two packages of a, of a pasta or a rice, vegetable, protein, and fruit. And um, I try to get some low sodium soups in there so they can just open up and have a quick meal. It's basically a package that has uh, food for three days, nine meals. Mm -hmm. but, but for one person, two pounds of rice is a lot, so they can make a lot more than, sure. you know, nine meals. And um, yeah, so... <laughs> That's how we do it. That's how we do it, yeah. But realistically, what SOS provides in the monthly emergency food yes. uh, bag or box, the package, is a supplement to what the seniors can secure on their own. Correct. You know, whether they do go to the supermarket or whether they have a neighbor or a friend go for them or uh, a member of their family going for them, what SOS does is fill a need for when the senior may be running low on food or, or certain food products. Yes. Fast forward to March of this year, 2020. Yes. Uh, and in particular, March 13th, when Long Island Cares uh, realized that the COVID-19 pandemic was real, yeah. that it was going to affect our region, just like it's affecting all parts of the country. Uh, on March 13th, New York was the epicenter for the COVID uh, pandemic. What did that do uh, to our seniors? We know what it did to our staff. We know that immediately we reduced our work week by five hours in order to give our staff opportunity to spend more time with their families, to take care of themselves. But as an essential service, food banks could not close. Right. And we also knew that there was going to be a significant increase in the need for food because businesses were temporarily closing due to the shutdown orders. People were social uh, distancing. We had to take other uh, important precautions in order to deal with the pandemic. And then you have 2,000 seniors on Long Island and what happens to them as COVID starts to spread? So immediately, um, the, uh, the senior centers that I was servicing closed, mm. completely closed. Because they couldn't bring in groups of they seniors. They couldn't bring so. in groups of seniors. And the um, housings that I was working with, all the coordinators were now um, working from home. So pretty much they thought, oh, we can't do this right now. And I said, oh, the need is big. We need to do this. So I organized with volunteers and um, we decided to go door to door. I had everyone's name, I had everyone's apartment. It was alphabetical, so I had to figure it out. Um, and uh, we organized the, um, the lists and we started delivering door to door uh, to the housings, not to the community centers. Right, to their, uh, their apartments. To their homes, directly. yeah. And that is what we're currently doing. Um, and it was, it's been very rough because I, you know, when we started, I started a relationship with all these seniors. They remembered me, they remember the, the volunteers that we used. Um, they would come out and thank me personally. Mm -hmm. Now we were dropping packages at their door and we would ring the bell and, and many times they come to the door and they want to talk now because sure. they're experiencing a lot of loneliness mm -hmm. and they need that social we all need social interaction so I asked my uh, volunteers that as they go to the door and they drop off the package um, 
just to wait a second, a moment, and um, and just say hello to somebody on the other side. Usually there's a glass door between, and um, we're all wearing masks. We also handed out uh, over 2,000 masks mm -hmm. to all our seniors. Um, they didn't have masks, they didn't have hand sanitizer. We were able to donate some of, uh, hand out some of that. It's It's been very emotional for me mm -hmm. because uh, uh, our seniors are a very vulnerable um, group and they have given us so much. Without them, we wouldn't be mm -hmm. here. No, ab absolutely, you're correct. Uh, you know, people are self-isolating. Mm -hmm. Many of our seniors live alone. Yes. Uh, they have families, but in many of the uh, cases, their families don't live here on Long Island. Their children live in other parts of the country. And so they're really you know, feeling isolated, feeling vulnerable, not knowing if the virus is going to personally impact them yes. uh, at all. And so they made the choice, we're not going out. But just because they didn't go out, and just because they don't go out, uh, as you said, doesn't really mean that they don't have this need for social interaction and company. Yes. And one of the things that I'm so impressed about uh, SOS not only the work that you're doing, but as you said many times, the work of our volunteers. Yes. Is the time we take, not just to deliver the, the emergency food assistance, but to talk to the seniors, to hear what they have to say, yes. to understand that they're fearful, just like the majority of the people living on this planet are fearful of COVID-19. And so you and your volunteers continue to fill a void for this social interaction. I remember when, if we go back to November, December, when we were meeting with the task force, mm -hmm. uh, that we heard from many of the program people from the senior centers and the housing projects talking about, you know, the need that the seniors have and that this is important support. And if a service is going to be canceled, that's okay but at least give us some notice that this is going to happen. Yes. And unfortunately, that notice wasn't given. But as you described, once we were given the additional funding through the Department of Health, we were able to do this outreach, and the seniors felt a little more comfortable knowing that these services would continue. Mm -hmm. So in addition to emergency food, because as you described, that's the primary focus of SOS, to provide the emergency food support right. that they were now losing with the uh, closure of the CSFP program. What else are we providing to them? So um, currently for Thanksgiving, we have um, over 1,500 individual Thanksgiving dinners to distribute. And today will be the first uh, site that I go to and we'll be taking these dinners, these fresh dinners. Already prepared. Already, already prepared, yes. So, yeah, that's going to be exciting because um, because of the COVID, many families are not getting together and people will be alone mm -hmm. at home. And at least you know, we have our traditional Thanksgiving turkey mm -hmm. with a little cranberry sauce, which fills the heart. <laughs> sure, no, absolutely. And, you know, as you said, the seniors are living in these municipal housing programs. Yes. Senior housing. And they do have an opportunity to have a neighbor, or even more than a neighbor, uh, live in the same development, and they're able to communicate. So there is social interaction. You know, as I, as I said, and as you know, uh, New York State funded the program through the end of March. And then at that point in time, uh, we didn't really get word as to where the state was going. Uh, lucky for us, our corporate friends at Newsday stepped in through Newsday Charities provided the emergency funding, understanding that SOS really needed to continue during the pandemic. Uh, and they were able to fund it uh, straight through, you know, April, May and part of June. At the same time, as we began to promote the SOS program and people were reading about the seniors, the public then responded yes. with donations for the program. Up until last month when Feeding America responded in a very big way. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, I'm just thrilled, you know, to tell our viewers and our subscribers that SOS is 100% funded right now, uh, thanks to our friends at Feeding America. 
and we will continue to do what we have to do and this will continue to be a priority of ours meeting the needs of our seniors uh, if people wanted to know if they can help is there something they can do to help our seniors to help SOS uh, what would you suggest what would I suggest um, well always donating to Long Island cares mm -hmm. and specifically saying SOS so that uh, our program will benefit from their donation and I'm currently trying to get uh, uh, children to write uh, notes and mm -hmm. cards nice. for our seniors because I feel like the, the young children and the seniors are, are two vulnerable sure. groups and rely so much on um, on others. So I currently have 57 cards to, to distribute. And just to let everyone know, just a little connection between um, mm -hmm. between all of us. Something to fill really, the gap if they're right. alone to get this nice yes. card from a child. From a child, that Someone's yeah. thinking of them. Yes. And yes. that you're facilitating this. And we also uh, are supporting seniors who are at home yes. uh, who have pets with pet food, correct? We do. Currently, I haven't been taking any pet mm -hmm. food. Um, it's a little logistically a little complicated, but we're working on that. Wonderful. Yeah, we're working on that. 2,233 seniors on Long Island yes. are currently receiving a monthly delivery of emergency food through yes. Long Island Cares through the work that you're doing with our volunteers. Our volunteers yeah. And now we all take a very big sigh of relief knowing that the program is adequately funded. Yes. And what a pleasure it is to talk to you oh. and to see you back and feeling well. Thank you. Uh, I know that the seniors who we support will get through this crisis. Yes. They'll get through the Thanksgiving holiday knowing that there are people who care about them. And that includes the people watching this program. Mary Lou, it was a pleasure having you here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. If you like what you see, if you're enjoying Breaking Bread from Long Island Cares, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. I'm Paul Pactor, CEO of Long Island Cares, the Harry Chapin Food Bank. We'll see you next time right here on Breaking Bread. Thank you so much for watching.